Today, we venture into the suburbs of Westchester County, New York, a place known for its safety and tranquility. However, in 1985, a series of macabre events unfolded that would forever shatter the community's sense of security. This is the disturbing story of Alex Mingle, a ruthless killer whose actions were so depraved they shocked even the most seasoned investigators. Hello strangers and strangelings. Welcome back to the Strange Bar and Grill. Today I'm serving up another true crime story time. Right now, just drinking on some whiskey because it puts me right where I need to be to tell these wild insane stories. So pull up a chair if you like strange true crime and storytelling because this is the place to be here with me, JP. And remember, I've been drinking, but I ain't been driving. All right, let's go. Playing Dress Up. Our story begins on the evening of February 24th, 1985, when Officer Gary Stamolowski, a five-year veteran of the Yonkers Police Department, conducted a routine traffic stop on the Sawmill River Parkway. The driver of the blue 1973 Mercury Capri was 30-year-old Alex J. Mingle a Dutch Guyana immigrant, accompanied by three passengers. And let's just point out in this picture here what we're all thinking. This dude does not wash his ass. Guaranteed he's on day seven, seven plus of them draws. But I digress, I digress. What should have been a straightforward encounter took a deadly turn when Alex suddenly opened fire, striking Officer Stamolowski. In a brazen act of violence, Alex then carjacked the patrol car with the gravely wounded officer inside. Shockingly, Alex's passengers aided in his escape and later lied to the police, allowing this dangerous criminal to remain at large. The following day, as 44-year-old Beverly Capone left her job at the International Business Machines Corporation, or IBM for short, in Mount Vernon, she had no idea of the grim fate that awaited her. Alex, still on the run and in need of a new vehicle, targeted the unsuspecting data processor. He abducted Beverly and fled with her to a cabin in the Catskills place he frequented for hunting and fishing. It was there in that remote location that Alex committed an act so heinous it defies comprehension. After taking Beverly's life, he meticulously removed her entire scalp and face with a sharp knife before callously dumping her body deep in the woods. And in just two days after Beverly's murder, Alex was spotted outside a shopping mall in Toronto, Canada, driving the missing woman's vehicle. When police attempted to apprehend him, Alex crashed into a wall and swerved into a dead-end street, leaving him cornered. As officers approached the vehicle, they were horrified by what they saw. Alex was not only behind the wheel of Beverly's car, but was also wearing her scalp as a wig and had applied her lipstick. Investigators later learned that he used Beverly's ID and disguised himself as the murdered woman to cross the Canadian border undetected. He took her scalp and her face and would overlay it on his and then flash his ID at the border to be let in. And let's take a second to ask, how the hell did this happen? These border patrol guys must have been higher than bird nuts on a power line if they couldn't tell he was wearing someone else's face. Like, what the hell? Anyway, I digress. Inside the car, police found two pistols, one of which was matched through ballistics to the weapon used to kill Officer Stamolowski. Even more disturbing was the discovery of facial tissue in the back seat, suggesting that Alex had intended to wear Beverly's face as a mask. 11 days after Alex's arrest, Beverly's remains were found in a densely wooded area about half a mile from the Catskills cabin. She had been stabbed once in the chest by Alex, and he had carefully removed her scalp and facial skin. Tissue samples from the body conclusively matched the scalp recovered from her car in Toronto. With this new evidence, authorities connected Alex to the attempted abduction of a 13-year-old girl in Skinny Atlas, New York. Just days after Beverly's murder, the child, who had been delivering papers, narrowly escaped from a stranger wearing lipstick and an ill-fitting wig, which she later described as possibly being a woman's scalp. As investigators delved deep into Alex's past, 
they uncovered more questions than answers. When examining his 1973 Mercury Capri, police found a Pennsylvania tourism map hidden in the dashboard, along with five wallet-sized photos of young women. Despite exhaustive efforts, none of the individuals in the photos have ever been identified, leaving open the possibility of additional victims. Alex emerged as the prime suspect in the unsolved murder of 13-year-old Antonella Matina, whose body was discovered in a shallow grave near the Taconic State Parkway on Thanksgiving Day in 1987. A witness claimed to have seen Alex with Antonella on the day she vanished, and his estranged wife revealed that he had visited his brother, who lived just about six blocks away from where the girl was last seen. To this day, Antonella's case remains open and a haunting reminder of the unanswered questions surrounding Alex's dark deeds. On April 26th, 1985, as Alex was being transported back from his arraignment in Greene County, he attempted a daring escape. Despite being handcuffed and chained, he grappled with a guard, seizing the officer's sidearm. In a split-second decision, State Trooper Robert Stable, who was driving the vehicle, stopped the car, turned around, and shot Mangle in the chest bringing his reign of terror to an abrupt end. The case of Alice Mangle serves as a chilling reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places, even in the seemingly safe suburbs of Westchester County. The brutal murders of Officer Gary Stamolowski and Beverly Capone, along with the attempted abduction of a young girl and the unsolved case of Antonella Matina, painted a picture of a depraved individual whose actions left an indelible mark on the community. As we reflect on this disturbing chapter in true crime history, we are reminded of the bravery of those who confronted this malevolent force head on. The law enforcement officers who tirelessly pursued justice and the survivors who managed to escape Mangle's clutches. Their stories serve as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable darkness. While some questions may never be fully answered, one thing remains certain, the memory of Alex Mangle's victims will forever be etched in our collective consciousness, a somber tribute to the lives cut short by a twisted mind. And Alex Mangle doesn't wash his ass, we know that for a fact. All right, that's going to be it for today, guys. If you like that story, then leave a like, maybe even a comment. And if you're new to my channel, maybe even consider subscribing. I don't know. Join the SBG family. We're, we have a good time here. And remember, I've been drinking, but I ain't been driving. And until next time, be safe, be good, 